Well, this morning we are uh, joined by uh, Dr. Travis Miller, an allergist. Uh, he comes in quite often, and he is the expert, obviously, all things allergies. <laughs> so this important topic. Uh, so you recommend parents fill out these types of forms. Um, um, so what should we do, what should we know sure. about these forms first off? Well, they're they're patient specific, so they have the patient's name on them. They've got what they're allergic to. So hold these up yep. real quick. Okay. So they've got symptoms that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, uh, if if the food allergen's been identified, uh, and basically the treatment plan, of right. what, what we're going to do should the accident happen, should they come across. Are, are are something like this present in a lot of schools? I mean, is this something that we educate some of our educators on? We try to, and I think I think schools, school nurses, school administrations have done a very good job of asking for this. Unfortunately, not every kid that goes to school has one of these, so we okay. really want to emphasize that. All right. So, Travis, here are uh, some uh, questions parents uh, should be asking sure. uh, their school, first of all. What is the policy for um, allergy food, allergy-inducing food in the lunchroom? Sure. It depends on what the child is allergic to, if they're allergic to peanuts or milk or things like that. You really need to get into the school office, talk to the principal, the school nurse, mm -hmm. uh, the health aides. And find out can they manage it? Can they make a food uh, food allergen free table? Do do um, many schools have something like that? It's district dependent. It's school dependent. But the good news is, I think the schools have okay. gotten the message. So, uh, what about uh, food or snacks allowed in the classroom? It's difficult if you have a highly sensitized kid and they're allergic to peanuts or milk. When people bring in snacks or bring in cookies or birthday cakes, it can be very dicey. So right. again, school dependent. We, we'd like it to be universal, but mm -hmm. we have to work with the administrators and the teachers. You know what? And it, it, I've been through this. Um, usually, the first day of school is my youngest right. son's right. birthday. It was yesterday, as right. a matter of fact. And brought in treats, but they have to be store-bought treats in a lot of school districts these days. And, and a reason why uh, is because it does list the ingredients. Labeling, exactly. And labeling can be very helpful. It's not foolproof, but it certainly gives the parent of the food allergic child at least some warning of what's coming. Right. Another important question to ask, uh, is everyone on staff trained to use an EpiPen, specifically probably the, the student's teacher, right? That's a great question to ask. Unfortunately, the answer is probably no. And that's something we're doing sort of at a state level uh, as far as legis legislative efforts to try and get people trained, get, get the devices in the schools that are necessary should there be a life-threatening okay. reaction. Uh, they're not hard to use, but they're you, not. you do need to know how to do it, though. Right. They take okay. five to ten minutes to learn, and they're pretty simple. Very so. good. All right. Uh, doctor, thank you so much. Always nice to see you again. Good, good information.